in the end, we could find that we, we could find that the use of this technology of the precision feeding, the individual precision feeding, um, uh, could uh, make uh, beneficial to these piglets because reduce this. Uh, this lose of energy to immune response and also the making a, a better microbiome to these piglets. And as I said, mainly after the second dose of immune castration. Welcome to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast where we explore the science behind swine nutrition. I'm your host, Jorge Estrada, and today in our podcast we have Dr. Igor Gipala, who is currently conducting his postdoctoral fellowship at the University of Saskatchewan in Canada. So today we'll be discussing uh, a very new topic for our audience, which is uh, precision feeding and relationship with inflammation reduction and gut microbiome modulation specifically for immunocastrated pigs. So, Dr. DePola, welcome to the Nutrition Podcast. Thanks for joining us today. And before we dig into this topic, could you please share with uh, our audience a quick summary of your background? Hi, Dr. Estrada. Thank you so much for this opportunity to stay here and share part of the results of my thesis, the work that I had during my, my PhD. So uh, I'm a veterinarian. I'm from Brazil. And uh, in Brazil, I did my master's degree, my PhD degree, both in the animal science. And as you said, currently, I'm a postdoc fellow at the University of Saskatchewan. Well, I appreciate you joining us today. And then again, well, let's dig into the topic. You know, let's, you know, you're mentioning that you have been doing some research about, you know, precision feeding for immunocastrated pigs, which... You know, it's a, it's a technology that is being used in, in many countries and implemented, you know, successfully. So, you know, what's the current impact of those experiments related with the gut health and precision nutrition in swine production? Great. This is a great question to start this conversation. First of all, I would like to comment that the precision feeding is not a restriction of feed but just to adjust the level of the nutrients for a group of animals or uh, you are able to tolerate the, each nutrient for each animal in case, in a group or individual. So when you don't use this technology, the most part of the time, the piglets or the pigs will have the more or less nutrients than they really uh, need. In the scenario when you have a high level of protein, when this, for example, when this pigs has more nutrients that they need, this substance, these nutrients, will be a substrate to pathogenic bacteria in the intestine or the other kind of bacteria as well, and uh, can promote uh, dysbiosis. And when you have this amount of bacteria, more bacteria that you really need to stay there, uh, can promote damage in the intestine, in the, in the enterocytes, and uh, these bacteria will pass through the, the intestine and activate the immune response. So we'll necessarily more immune cells in the intestine. And as we know, the immune system demand a lot of energy. So in this case, uh, more energy is demanded to the immune cells to kill these pathogens and uh, less nutrients go to produce the muscles and now going to the the to be used to immune system. So this is not good to produce pigs. Excellent. And thanks for the introduction, uh, you know, around the topic and describing what, you know, precision nutrition means. So with that in mind, why don't you tell us a little bit what, what the hypothesis of your specific experiment? Yeah, our hypothesis were that the, the, in the, main, the main hypothesis was that using the precision feeding, the individual precision feeding, 
uh, these animals would be able to have uh, low immune responses. And also, you can modify, you change the parameters like the uh, microbiome and uh, the metabolic biomarkers and the, the stress, uh, oxidative stress. Oh, there you go. So, and, and why, why specifically you guys did this with immunocastrated pigs, though? Yeah, this is also a point in Brazil. Yeah, when we conducted this this trial, uh, we usually use the immunocastrated pigs, and but we don't have a lot of information about how uh, these immunocastrated pigs are affected by uh, this technology, the the precision feeding, and also how these animals you change the terms like microbiome, like immune uh, immune response. So we thought that this would be an interesting uh, result that we have a match between all these, uh, these factors used in our treatments and that could promote uh, good results to the peak production. No, no, excellent. Now we understand a little bit better of, of the whole background of, of how you guys are thinking or at, at least your thought process. So, why don't you share with us a little bit of the main findings of, of this experiment? Yeah, the treatments that we used to this trial was a control group with 25 pigs and also a treatment uh, with the individual precision feeding with 25 pigs. And do, these pigs were, the trial was conducted in pigs in the growth finish phase. So the control group, uh, we had pigs in in five phase with 20 with 21 day in each phase and after this period we changed the diet and uh, the precision feeding we using the the machine a feeder automatic feeder and uh, this technology uh promote for each pig for each day uh, a specific level of nutrients a level of protein and this was changed every day. So pig, the, each pig ate the, the specific amount of protein it was requested. Uh, in the end, as I said, we evaluated the microbiome, the immune response, the biomarkers uh, to metabolism and uh, oxidative stress. And in the end, uh, we found that the, we didn't have difference between the treatments to biomarkers, the, the metabolism, and the, the oxidative stress. But mainly after the second dose of the immunocastration, we had interesting results to immune response because this, uh, after the second dose of immunocastration, the pigs had an improvement in the feed intake. It's normal to evaluate this, to find these results. And uh, this high level of it, uh, the, the feed that these pigs ate in the control group impacted in an in in improvement in the pro-inflammatory effect and the anti-inflammatory effect because they had more uh, substance, as I explained, in the, in the background of this this project, we, we follow the same pattern. And also we found a change in the abundance of different genus of bacteria. And the most part of this genus in the, in the control group was associated with damage or in, can be explained like uh, pathogenic bacteria. So uh, in the end, we could find that we, we could find that the use of this technology of the precision feeding, the individual precision feeding, um, uh, could uh, make uh, beneficial to these piglets because reduce this uh, this lose of energy to immune response and also the making a, a better microbiome to these piglets. And as I said mainly after the second dose of immunocastration. Fortiva is moving beyond feed additives to create foundational ingredients that work with your pig's physiology to support resilience and health. With proven technologies like Ambitene, Flow Matrix, and Endura, Fortiva helps you address the toughest challenges in swine production, from gut health to growth performance. Together, we can make animals more resilient in the face of future challenges. Learn how at fortivaimpact.com. I mean, that's 
for a nutritionist, of course, you know, there will be a, it's a dream to try to feed the pigs according to their requirement, as you're mentioning on, on a daily basis, right? So uh, with that in mind, could you share with us maybe what are some of the practical applications of, of this research? Yeah, sure, sure. Yes, I'm, I'd like to say that I'm open to anybody who would like to talk more about this project because it's really interesting, the result that we had. And, uh, but uh, this result can show to us that we can need, to, we should need more attention to this category of immunocastrated pigs because we had great opportunities to work with these this animals after the second dose of uh, the immunocastration. And also, uh, we can start to talk more about how to really implement the technology of the precision feeding. Because as we, we see in the literature, we can find the results about the uh, body composition, the performance, but our results show as well uh, the results about the immune response, the intestinal health, and these results are new and uh, we can also contribute to, to, to implement this technology because it's, uh, we have uh, a great future to, to, to talk and to make possible this technology. Awesome. Well, unfortunately, that's all the time that we have today, Dr. DePaula. So thank you again for joining us. And we'll look forward to see you maybe in another episode. How about that? Okay, yeah, it's perfect to me. <laughs> all right, well, everyone, thanks for listening to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe and leave us some good comments or bad comments. And join us in our next episode. Thank you.